survived their father's suicide by writing songs. My kid was 14. I survived my husband's death by taking care of my kid. I was already a helicopter mom, but now I was with my kid 24-7. I practically stood outside the door of my kid's classroom at school. Okay, yeah, I did stand outside the door <laughs> of my kid's classroom at school because I was afraid that a cloud of depression would swell up my kid as it had with dad. I was afraid something terrible would happen. My kid wrote songs because they were part of that program, School of Rock. Yeah, and um, my kid goes by the pronouns they get. I have one kid, they. So they uh, were part of School of Rock. My late husband discovered that program, enrolled my kid when they were 10, they loved it. School of Rock teaches you how to play instruments. They group kids into bands, and they teach them the classic songs of David Bowie and Led Zeppelin, and the kids put on concerts at local venues, uh, you know, for the parents and the friends. But also, School of Rock has a songwriting program. My kid took that, that class, and, and my kid wrote songs about, um, you know, Mean Girls and being in the summer theater musical, but um, now they wrote song after song about losing their dad. Songs with lyrics like, why couldn't I make you happy enough? I feel sad, I don't want to leave my house. When my kid had a lot of songs, they started to play out at coffee houses, and in the set, there'd be a cover, you know, a song written by somebody else. And most often, that cover would be All Drown by Soleil, an Icelandic artist. He lives alone in his house out there, far, far away. He sleeps with his eyes open. One day when my kid was in high school, they said to me, Mom, I need to go to Iceland. <laughs> what? <laughs> Iceland, Mom, the music, Soleil's from Iceland? Daddy would have understood. <laughs> Iceland? Mom, I think that Soleil creates the music she does because of the landscape. And my kids showed me pictures of Iceland, and yeah, there were waterfalls and fjords and the northern lights, it was pretty otherworldly. And my kids said, Mom, when I feel anxious, I look at those photos and feel calm. Okay, yeah, I guess Iceland could be like a high school graduation trip gift thing. Great. We could do that. What do you mean we? <laughs> Well, I would take you. I'm not going to go with you. Well, honey, you've never been outside the country. I mean, you've barely left California except to visit family. Mom, you have to let go of me. I said, how would you get around? I'll drive. You don't have a license. I'll get a license. I said, you know, I think you have to be 25 to rent a car. Not in Iceland. <laughs> We're not getting along. It was tense because, you see, my husband had been the fun parent. My husband was the one who introduced my kid to Abbott and Costello, took them to their first concert, Bob Dylan. I was the one who nagged about the homework and nagged about doing the science project. Okay, I actually did the science project, and I, I won. And I worry all the time. And one day, my big husband sister uh, called me up, asked how my, my kid was doing. I said, you're not going to believe this. My kid is demanding to go to Iceland by themselves to listen to the music, and she said, well, we could all go. <laughs> what? We love to travel, never been to Iceland. My husband could plan it all. Oh, well, maybe, yeah. So one day I said to my kid, would you go to Iceland with your aunt and her family? And my kid said, Okay, yeah, 
Oh, wait, you're not going. Yes, I thought I would also go. Yes, okay, then no. Okay, then I am going to call her up. I'm just going to tell her, you won't let me go. Oh, play the martyr. <laughs> Make me feel guilty because I won't let you go. Okay, that is it. You have ruined everything. I waited a couple weeks, and one day after school, I said, hey, let's go to REI and get some hiking boots and quilted jackets for us for Iceland. My kid didn't say anything. They got in the car. We went to REI. Yeah. <laughs> On the big day, we flew to New York City to meet up with my late husband's sister, her husband, her three kids, two kids a little older than mine, boy and girl, and a younger son. And all seven of us flew to Iceland. And yeah, my brother-in-law had it all planned. As soon as we were off the plane, he had us in a van that could seat seven. We hit the road. He had it all mapped out, all the hotels booked. And I thought, well, yeah, OK, this is kind of nice. Just sit back every now and then, hop out, and run over to a waterfall or a fjord. <laughs> my kid talked to their cousins, ignoring me, which was fine. So by the end of that day, my brother-in-law had taken a lot of photos. And I said, well, this trip will be well documented. And he said, my mom said there's nothing to see in Iceland. I'm going to show her. <laughs> So we checked into the hotel. My brother-in-law had us up at 6 a.m. because apparently we had missed a few things that first day and we'd have to squeeze them in. There'd be a lot of driving. He would put on some music. And my kid said, great, I can't wait to hear the music of Iceland. He said, no, I don't think so. And he put on the playlist from his phone and it started off with Taylor Swift's love story. <laughs> my kid actually turned around in their seat in front of me, looked at me as if to say, can you believe this? I mean, not to take anything away from Taylor Swift, but we had come to Iceland to listen to Icelandic music. And after Taylor Swift, there were a whole bunch of other American pop stars. And then finally, this recording of Jewish comedians came on. <laughs> and they told jokes like, this guy says to me, how's your wife? I said, compared to who? <laughs> and the family would jump in with the punchlines before the comedians even said them because they obviously listened to this tape a million times and my kid and I were silent. Dinner time, we pulled into a restaurant where the specialties were sheep's heads and ram's testicles. My kid and I are vegetarians. We ate a lot of bread. And so it went. And yes, the landscape was stunning. But at the pace that my brother-in-law said, it was all a blur. We're exhausted. My kid tried to get some sleep in the car, and we were hungry. Our last two days of our one-week trip in Iceland, we were to be in Reykjavik. So we checked into our, our hotel, and my brother-in-law said, we men will hike to the water tower. You girls will want to shop. <laughs> my, my kid and I didn't dare look at each other. We would have burst out laughing. So we went to shop. My sister-in-law, her daughter, me and my kid. And those stories were full of heavy coats and, and big sweaters, exactly what we would need living in Southern California. And my kid on their, on their phone, they saw that there was a vinyl record store not far. And they asked if we could go. The others had no interest. They went back to the hotel. I said to my kid, you know, this could be a place they might know about some local music happening. Maybe there's something going on tonight. My kid was like, oh, whatever. We went into that store, and I asked the clerk. He said in three days, there was a big music festival. Artists coming in from all over Iceland. I said, Will has gone home by then. He said, well, there is a pre-festival concert tonight at the Whale Museum. It's not being advertised, but it is open to the public. And some folks from the festival are going to perform. One of my favorites, you probably never heard of her, Soleil. <laughs> my jaw dropped. And my kid and I looked at each other. We were giddy, and I thought, did my late husband throw us down a gift from the other world? I mean, how was this possible? This is incredible. And the guy gave us a ticket link. I got tickets for everyone. And we rushed back to the hotel, and everybody was already back. They were playing cards. 
And I said, this is amazing. We found out that one of my kids' favorite artists is performing tonight here in Reykjavik. I get tickets for everyone. And my brother-in-law said, nah, I think we'll pass. I said, okay, we're going to head out early so we're not late. My kid and I went to a vegan restaurant. <laughs> and I, I said to the server, is there anything fun to do here in this neighborhood? We have a little time before this concert we're going to. He said, there's something kind of fun down the way. It's called the Penis Museum. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We finished our food. We were out there like a shot to that penis museum. And there were penises of every shape and size for every mammal. And they all had these really funny quotations, uh, these uh, captions, because they were the collection of this eccentric school teacher. And my kid and I took photos of each other with the biggest specimen, the uh, penis of the sperm whale. And the caption said, it is a Moby Dick. <laughs> and we were out of there walking down the streets of Reykjavik, past the warehouses, all the way to the sea. And there was a concrete building, the Whale Museum. And we went inside. It was all blue light, as if we were underwater. And there were this recording, strange sounds, whales singing. And we came to this open area. And there was an enormous plastic whale hanging from the ceiling. And beyond was a stamped And she came out. Soleil came out and sat. You'll never escape from this sad, sad house. I take his hand and whisper, I'll drown when I see you. I'll drown when I see you. I hug my kid, and they did not pull away.